I've put this little video together to help answer some of the questions that I've been commonly asked regarding the rose gold handbag that I've made. So hopefully this will answer a lot of the questions and also give you a bit of a visual on the different things that, um, how I've set my machine up and the settings and the little tools and things like that that I use. So just a short, brief, quick little video. So first off, I've been asked um, commonly is what machine that I used. And I'll just move my camera there. So the machine I used is a Janome HD9 heavy duty machine. So it's like a semi-industrial machine, but a lot more compact as you don't need the big tables and that, that come with the industrial machines. The next common probably question I've been asked is what thread that I used because I think a lot of people have seen the top stitching and quite like the look of the top stitching. So I've got the thread here so you can see it. So it's a Coates de Bond and it's a Tex weight of 80. So it, this I use on my big compound feed machine but it sews beautifully through this machine as well. So one of the next questions that I've got asked is what size stitch length that I used for the top stitching. And I'll take you over here. So on my machine, you can see there my settings. The stitch length is just over a four. Sometimes for top stitching, I'll use anywhere between a three and a half and a five and a half generally. It depends on the bag that I'm making and the look that I want to achieve. So I'll always do little test samples on scrap pieces of my cutoff materials so that I'm testing out what the stitching will look like on the exact same materials that I'm using to make the bag. Now another um, question I've been asked was, um, what was it, Thread uh, needle size was one that I've been asked. So I've got my needles out so I could show you a look at the needles that I use. So these needles are a size 14 and they're made, they're the right needles for my machine. I think they're Oregon needles. And if you look close on a needle, oh, I don't know if it'll focus in that close on my lighting. On these needles, there's a different color at the top of each needle. And it will also tell you the size of the needle. So on this one, for example, I can see up here that the needle I used is a size 14. And it's also written on there. But at least then, if you've only used that needle for a little project, you can put it back in its case and you know it's good to go again. If I do that, and I know it's a needle I've used before, I generally will put it back in the case upside down because then I know that I've used it. That's just another little tip that might help some people. Now for, th the, for the threading and the settings as well for the how I've got it set up, I'll just zoom you in a little bit closer. So the foot pressure on this machine, because I've sewn through um, in some of the areas quite thick materials, I've reduced the foot pressure and the foot pressure is adjust this bit here. So the amount of pressure that this foot pushes down onto the materials to feed it through. So to keep things nice and smooth and not pulling and like dragging the materials that I was using, I've set my stitch length here, um, foot pressure, sorry, to it's nearly at almost zero. So it's just enough for my machine to feed that through. And I find that that setting when I'm using the thick vinyls or leather and that, it's enough that it doesn't really mar the fabric, like leave imprints of like the feed dogs, which are these little, little guys. Let me just move my camera again. These little guys down here, like they're quite rough. They've got like little grooves in them there. So that's what helps feed through the fabric as you're stitching along. Uh, what was something else? Now I'll show you how, I'll take you in and give you a close up of how I've threaded this machine. Let me just position this camera and I'll have a little seat here. So my thread, so my thread spool sits here at the back of the machine, feeds up through the arm here and it comes through and I've threaded it through from the back through to the front, looped it over the top of that bar 
then threaded it back through on this last hole. So there's nothing threaded through on this little middle hole. I didn't need to use that. What happens then if you thread it through all of the three holes, it actually produces more tension on this thread. Whereas I prefer to adjust my tension by using this little dial here on my machine. So on my machine, I'll take you in closer so that you can see. Let me see if I can get it there. Oh, will it focus? There it is. So I'll take you straight over the top there. And that's where my tension is set for the thread and for the materials that I was using and for the needle and that. So everything just works beautifully. The needle isn't threading, like threading apart my thread at all. If I was using too small a needle, generally what can happen is it burrs up and roughs up this thread and then that's when you can get thread breakage. So if your thread is tending to break on you a little bit, first thing that I will tend to do is I will try the next size needle up. So if it was doing that um, with this particular thread, instead of using the 14 needle, I would get out a size 16 needle and test that and see how that goes. So that's um, another little thing there. So yeah, sorry, got a little bit sidetracked. So back to the threading. So we've come back through, threaded over, and then we've come through this last little hole. There's two little discs here that just sort of wobble around. I don't adjust and play with this. This here is really just acts as a guide to help place that thread so that it just comes through down here slips through so when I'm threading it through under here back up and then there's a little bar here a little metal bar let me see if I can zoom you in close to there you might be able to see it there's a little bar just here I've got my finger underneath it there so I thread through underneath over that little bar give it a little draw down tug it down back up underneath this little metal bar back through here and then there's a hole here so I thread through here comes out here thread it back through this hole here and then I'll go straight up through this lever here it's got a little little hole there as well back down through hooking it through this little bar here that keeps it nice and straight then there's a little bar here so I'll thread it through there and I'll just bring you out a little bit further there, but still keep you zoomed in. So yeah, back through here. And then underneath here, there's a little circle, like a little metal ring that goes around. And there's a little opening for it at the back. That secures this thread here and keeps it going down really nice and straight up against that needle. Then I thread the needle through this side and back out this side here then once I'm threaded always make sure your threads are to the back when you first um, do your first stitch hold these threads you don't have to pick them up and hold them taut like that all you need to do is just put a finger on them just hold them down with your fingers just so that when you first put your needle down the Threads don't get all tangled up underneath in here and make a mess behind your material and that just saves like what they call thread nesting happening there. Um, now, so the result, I'll give you a close up as well of the top stitching. Oh, actually, let's remind me, there's another little gadget that I've got for this machine and it's this here. It's a little guide, little edge guide and I can adjust this to anywhere that I want it on that plate. I'll just zoom you back out again there. So there's a little screw, slide it along the bar there, and then there's markings on my um, plate here as well. And that little bar, I can hook it into that little place there. So if I hold it, I can just then tighten that screw and for this one here now, uh, let me set it here. I'll put it on the one centimetre or equivalent to three quarters, three eighths of an inch. 
that little plate then there is going to stay here. There's some material that I can use. I've just got a couple little pieces of scrap. So when I'm feeding fabric through, I can use that plate here, this little arm, as a guide so that I know my stitches will be consistently straight. So that's another little tool that I like. When I'm, it's not in use, I can just flip it up and it's up and out of the road. So I don't always need it. It's more just for when you're sewing along the edges. And then for this bag, for the top stitching that I did around the top, I did a combination of both. So I lined up the material, so the top edge of the bag here, up against the edge of this foot. So I used this, lined it up right along that edge of the foot, put my plate down. Then what I did is I slid this along until it touched the edge of that foot. And I know now that if I feed this fabric through, it's lining up with the edge of the foot. I've got this little plate here which will help keep me straight, which will give you really nice straight um, stitching. So I'll just show you an example here. I'll bring it in close up. Let me just see there. See how there, it's really lovely and straight. So, and on my, I use it as well to help give me nice straight edges, doing my zipper pocket there. So I'll see if you can see that. So it gives a, like it helps me sort of get a fairly consistent, nice straight edge of the top stitching. You can probably see a bit harder on black, but you can see how nice and straight and consistent those stitches are. Um, I think that was the main questions that I've been asked. If there's anything else that you'd like to know, um, please feel free to comment below as I'm always happy to share any any knowledge that I have to help others and just so you know yes I am going to be releasing the pattern for this gorgeous bag I had already digitized um, all my pattern pieces and that because I do that with all my patterns so they're already digitized but then as I'm sewing I'll make as I'm cutting or sewing, I'll make additional notes so that I know I need to go back and edit. See, I just have little notes on there so that I know when I go to make this bag again, Every I've updated it. When I've updated it, I'll always tick off any of the notes that I've made on my pattern pieces. So yeah, like see here, I've put heavy stabilizer and then I've made notes as to which stabilizers I actually used so that if I want to make the bag with the exact same structure again I know what I've used inside this bag also then um, at the end result if I find like it's too structured like this is really a beautifully structured bottom she has a lovely bottom <laughs> I like her bottom so she's really nice and firm and I can go back to my notes here that I've made on my pattern pieces and I will know what I've materials that I've used to construct that bag. Um, I've got here an example. So this was my one of my test sews. Um, and then I found that it just didn't have enough structure for the particular structure. Like it's quite structured, but I wanted it to have a little bit of extra beef in there. So I use that layer, which is a lightweight Decaville, heavyweight Decaville. And then I also added on another layer of, um, I think it's called Peltex. It's a, it's a thicker padded sort of stiffener. So that's what made this really nice and structured in the end result. In this bag, as you can see, it's a lot more structured. Like I can't just bend it. It, it will sit beautifully lovely straight bottom and then I'll put the bag five bag feet just one to secure in the bottom because then if you have got heavy items in the bag it's not going to um, sag down down in the middle when you put it on a surface um, I've already started writing up and making notes 
of my pattern. Look at this. <laughs> I've got notes all over it everywhere. Um, little collection. So I've even, because this is what I've been doing previously, working on it, my collection, because I'll be releasing several patterns. Notes of all what's being used, doing the facings and windows. Probably can't see any of this. This is for my smaller size. So when I do release this pattern, I will be doing this pattern probably in three sizes. The original smaller size, I'll be doing this size. And then I'd really love to make a bigger size as well. So when I do publish the pattern, the instructions will be basically the same for all the different sizes. And yeah, so you'll have three different size bags that you can choose to make. So yeah. Okay, that's enough waffle from me for now. I'll catch us later. And please, yeah, if you do have any questions or anything you'd like to know, just leave me a comment. So, okay, bye.